as it's been referred to on the 4.0 to Pro podcast. Oh, okay. I quite like that term, Lee. Yeah. It's, it works. So, so yeah, again, both. another quick side out here. Yeah, and in fact, I think Daniel Wren was runner-up in the first Nationals. Played with Andy Portlock. Yeah, it was 2021. My first one here. Yeah. Yeah, oh, they must. Oh, they they lost to James Sheldry and Darren. Darren. Very tall Darren. Stone. Uh, I can't remember. Nice speed up there yeah. from. Seb's a really nice player. Yeah. Um, he gets a little bit overexcited sometimes. Yeah, uh, he's he's a little handsy. Yeah. He just go, goes a little bit too quick, too early. I played him in the South East League your, that you organised yep. a couple yep. of weeks ago, sir, uh, Lou, and then had a successful game with him and Alex Oliver. Oh, yes. They decided to speed up with me relatively regularly. Uh. Didn't work very well. <laughs> there we go. Roberto yeah. putting that drive in. And again, you're exposed, you're not forwards. Yeah, I, I think one of the difficulties for Roberto is he doesn't get to play as often with the higher level players yeah as some of these do um and what he gets away with when he does play he won't get away with yeah this level absolutely right it's um, important to have if you can breed your own to a degree if you can't get access to it yeah but it's yeah. hard to do that yeah it's hard to do it. we're really lucky in london because you know well, london for a start yeah exactly there's an awful lot of people and in. when everybody comes over, I'm going to go on holiday to London, England. Yes. Where can I play people in London, England? Exactly. And so we get some really high level guests. Um, and it's easy to offer them the opportunity to play high level. Let me go straight away. We've got Seb getting the ball down on Alex at his feet. Point one. Easy peasy. So yeah. now side out zero two. Let's see if Seb and Roberto can get something on the board here. Not like that. Not like that, no. Successfully unwinding the stack there from Dan and Alex. Are they on three then? If they were going to be. They weren't unwinding the stack. What happened there? Oh, oh. oh. It's two. Yeah, 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 it is two. But they, obviously they, they, did, they did a switch even yeah. though they were on the right side. Keep it, keep them guessing. Well Good left. leave. Now, what, there is one thing to be said about if you st are stacking team, if you switch when you're not stacked, that can really mess yeah. with people's heads. Again, another strategic nuance you'll see at the high levels. They'll be comfortable doing it and be able to use it as a weapon. Similar to the, uh, the, the attempted Ernie that doesn't go. Yeah. Just the fact that you move can throw lower level players off. Yeah. So, so four some early run here to Alex. That's, and to Dan. Out. That's out. Yep. It's unusual. I don't see very often four players, four different paddles. Yeah. But we are seeing a, a paddle from our sponsors on the court, which is always nice to see a yep. Frank in there by Dan Wren. Yeah. One of the Carbon SDKs. It's, in, it's been exciting, isn't it, in the game? Loot. Nice How much? Touch. That's oh, unlucky, Dan. Trying to do a bit too much there. Yeah. The spin on that ball from the previous shot, making it hard for you to control. How many more paddle brands we can actually access in the UK yeah. now? Yeah, early days it was. Uh, there were certainly only a, a few. Jane and Mike were running the UK pickleball yeah. shop as early as and I, sort of I, seven, eight years ago. I mean, I, I remember starting four years ago. There wasn't a huge choice. No. no Bringing Jane and Mike for some tips. Yeah. Now you can get pretty much anything. Great hands, Alex. Good, good stuff. Oh, oh, trying to go I think inside trying out. A oh, bit that's not a good shout. Yeah, that's no. Just keep working that area that was working for you. Keep it back cross court. Mm. Every time you're changing that big angle, you're always putting risk into your game. But easier said than done. 
Oh, yeah. Good hands. Good recovery there from the but, young team. You know, Roberta's hit that hard down the middle where you've got two full hands. Yeah. Get that angle, and that would have gone. Yeah. Good resetting there from Alex and Dan. Oh. Unlucky there from Alex. They looked like they were in, on top of that row. Yeah, they, they just did, stayed they a did. life seven, Roberto there. So three five. Both teams stacking now. So Lou, for our viewers at home that may be new to pickle, well, that's just gone wide. Can you explain the strategic reason why you would stack a team? Sure. Well, the, the most obvious reason for stacking is if you've got a left-handed player. Um, and to keep your strength down the middle of the court, you would have both players with their forehand down the middle. Now that means that you have to position yourselves on the correct side of the court. Which nice location, that speed up there from Alex. Roberto just not able to get control of that paddle. Yeah. So try that again now to 5-4. And then the other reason for stacking is if you may have one player in the partnership who is stronger than the other. Yeah. Um, play to their strengths. Play to their strengths. That mixed doubles to me we'll talk about with Ben and Anna Lee. Exactly. Um, certainly play to their strengths. So people go, why are you stacking? Because neither of you are left-handed. Yeah. Um, and the answer is no, but they're better than me. Yeah. <laughs> so if they're better than me, we're going to keep their Or they're more mobile than me. Or they're more mobile, or for whatever reason. Um, and certainly... Oh! Um, Good reset in there, staying alive at that point. Oh, oh Roberto so well smashed deserved at that. there by so uh, Daniel. Such good defence there. Daniel and Alex defended brilliantly. You can see Roberto's there. disappointed. He just snatched at that ball in the middle, yeah. possibly going long as well. If look how high he made contact on that. Eight four, they should seven four. I think. And I think Roberto comes from a tennis background, and he may swing a little bit further yeah. than he needs to and that swing takes you know it takes a second away from yeah. your contact with the ball yeah and the more you take out in so front now, of you we're now at eight four so we've now got our mini a timeout on the turn loop what can Seb and Roberto do to change their fortunes at the end change well I think they've got to take advantage of the fact that they are stacking yeah they've got to try and you know, get the balls down the outside. I I like when you pl we played Jamie and Pete, uh, Jamie and Harrison last year on here, and we just went very wide. Yeah. It was rather than sh shrinking the court in the middle, it was like okay, we're dinking outside all yeah. the time. Absolutely. You put it in the middle, yeah. I'm going to your backhand. You yeah. put it in the middle, I'm going to your backhand. Yeah. But it's amazing how many people go onto a court. One, they don't even notice that their opposition is left-handed they yep. don't notice that they're stacking they're so focused on their own game and then when by the time they do realize great leave there yeah. from did a bit of a matrix move swerving out the way he's pretty agile alex yeah keanu reeves would be proud yeah actually he looks a bit like keanu reeves maybe a bit more john wick with the beard <laughs> yeah need to grow the hair out a little bit though for john wick Alex had a good win in the uh, at the English Open uh, with his partner Caleb Cuddehy. They won the uh, the 4-0 uh, men's doubles, and Alex took the brave decision to sort of jump mm. literally two levels. <laughs> oh, well, we've seen an Ernie. <laughs> Soft Ern. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing with Ernie. Everyone's expecting it to be driven. No, it doesn't have to be. No, clever shot. It's there. about taking the reaction time away. You don't have to put it through your opponent's chest. Nope. You just need to get it where they can't react. See, look how far he comes back on his, his big step back there. Roberto's quite a flamboyant player, isn't he? He is, yeah. He is. It's nice to see him thinking. So, that you know, that was a really nice exchange. And he came out on top. Yeah, they're now correct. Roberto, I know, likes to play on the left. Yeah. 
great hatter from Dan Rin to reset that. And there's down. a really good thing. He hit that ball and he took a massive step backwards. Yeah. But when it came back, he's then too late hitting it. Oh, that's a huge miss on the serve there. That's an absolute freebie. So let's see if Seb and Roberta can get something on the board on this time in the side out. That's a nice. great, great roll. reach in there to flick that ball from below the height of the net. Great roll. They're a little bit behind. They're struggling on the, on the unwind there. Oh, come on, boys. Oh, that oh that's, that's a young. freebie. That's not going to be very good on that scene. So now 11 4 on the two or on the one? Said also from a tennis Ooh, background. Yeah. Oh, Dan nearly got away yeah. with that. And Seb some plays as well. Yeah, Theo. Big, yeah, I was playing well, with Theo and Seb yeah. this morning, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit of warm-up yeah. before we got here. Yeah. Very nice two-handed backhand from Theo. Is he playing in the junior event? Oh, I think he is, actually. hope he is. We've also got Summer, the uh, daughter of Jack Grattan, yeah. who's playing in the 3-5 three, three, five mixed, mixed with her brother, Freddie. Yeah. yeah, I've played against Summer. Yeah. She hits the ball. I have been coaching uh, Freddie and Summer, uh, yeah. Jack and Summer, a couple of times last week, and yes, yeah. Summer, also known as Spiker by her family, does like a drive. She does. And she likes to speed up, particularly at her dad. Yeah. And obviously, if you've met Jack, Jack is a, a taller man, so a quite large target yeah. height wise. Yeah. Similarly, height to Seb, actually. Oh, and it's, it's really there. nice to see their involvement in the game that they yeah. haven't, you know, they've just acquired the UK pickleball shop. Yeah. And as a as a business, yeah, um, they've done it because they love the game. Yeah. They're playing. They've got a court. They've got a court in their at their home. Jack's talking about setting up a club nearby for him. Yeah, he's, they've got a few decent players in the area. Um, I think the village that they live in has got something like four. I think it was six. Oh, is it six homes six with private, pickleball courts? Six private external pickleball courts. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Which is great, except you're in the UK. So our weather is cruel. Yes, indeed. So, 6-11 here. Nice reset there. Yeah, nice. Oh, yeah, so, side out again. Uh... Oh, must uh, be 10. Must be 10. Come, come. Yep. Thanks yep. for that. Yep. Come Getting on. that ball down, come. it's hard to defend it. Yep. Down and at the feet. That's why that concept of the unattackable ball works in pickleball. And that's the magic of this game, isn't it, Lou? Yep. If they can't attack you, they're not going to win the point. I mean, the carbon fiber paddles are changing the technology a little bit. There's a little mm. bit more opportunity to do it from boards you didn't used to be able to. But the fundamental principles still apply. Yeah. Nice, so Alex. Totally switch the stack, which is just messing with them. They can't get any rhythm on where they're who they're returning to. Yeah. Very First smart thing you play. said, oh, what should they do? And was, and I'll go on the outside. And then they switch the stack. And then they're like, hold on, I was going to go on the outside. And now I can't. So you just need to play percentages. Yeah. Play what would be the right ball if they weren't doing anything. Yeah. Then let them unwind or not, and then go from there. So into a bit of a dink exchange. Oh, and then hands back. Oh, great resetting here. Oh, Bursa just tries to do a little bit too oh. much, but uh, you, we'll let him have that one. It was a great rally from all four yeah. players there. One of the best rallies in the in the game so far. Yeah, absolutely. Lee. Not flowed as well as some of the games, if I'm honest. But still, uh, there's still been some lovely shots and some oh. nice exchanges. Seb really on the reach there, taking it on the volley and trying to change angle. That's like the three things you don't want to be doing together in a shot, unless you've really got control. Yeah. 
I'd like to see a slightly softer game from Seven yeah. Roberto here. Just try and do something. The power game has not been working no. for them. And in fact, the points they have won has been when um, Roberto's got into um, some cross-court dink exchanges. Yeah. Although they did win that power rally. Eleven. I think it's six thirteen. I think I said. Oh, did they? Yeah, I think I think I think we're a little bit behind on the scoring here. I think it's six thirteen. I think I heard called there. Just snap for the call from Let's Roberto listen. here. Oh, didn't hit anything. Fault. Yes, Lou. We we <laughs> could do that. Did you do the Ron Ponder course? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but I've had Ron Ponder stay at my house uh, <laughs> numerous times and, and I get every version of every role. Did you at his wedding or you were there I at his did. wedding? I, I did indeed uh, celebrate the wedding of uh, Ron and his beautiful wife. Oh, Dan, just trying to do a little bit too much. Go one more back to Seb, then you can change the direction. You weren't quite on balance on that shot. Great reset there from Dan. Oh, oh, they deserve that. They worked so hard yeah. to stay in that yeah. point. But this, this I was talking to Pep earlier, Pep Giuliano. Yep. And he was saying about the principle of playing one more shot. Yep. And it's everything I try and build my game on. Yep. Play one more shot. Yep. So game ball here. And the yeah, good speed the up there. The difference with that one with Roberto, he took the ball when it was higher. Yeah. If you're going to volley that ball and you cannot roll it, up and over that net you've got to take it early yeah. you've got to take it where you can put it oh in. unlucky net caught there so second serve now 6 14. they can pull a couple back here on the second serve you can see the lift on that body there Leo, you saying yeah. Yeah, so I like Seb's positive move on that. Yeah. Just sensing something wasn't quite right. Let's be dynamic and come in and take that middle part of the court. Oh, so they are now going to stack it. They're stacking at 7-14. Oh. Net cord. That had a slightly shorter backspin on Roberto's drive mm -hmm. there. I think that is actually helping him generate more consistency in that yep. stroke. Oh, a nice little mm -hmm. drop there. Certainly, a, maybe a little bit of disguise on that and that's tricking Alex and making him change his shot decision. Oh, oh Roberto, not a time oh, to do that. Not a time No, yeah, that is horrible. So game ball again, 14-9. Oh yeah, they're just checking how they correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They are stacking. Yeah. yeah. And that's nice because they didn't have to check with them. No. Nope. You know, they could have just taken the point. I think that's the, the good thing, the sportsmanship um, in this game. You don't want to take cheaper. Oh, oh nice down the That's it. Too high, bang on. Yeah, lovely. So that's the last game in Group A uh, for the Men's Open. Yeah, they'll be pleased with that.